All right, with the uh, time we have left this year, which is just uh, today, tomorrow, and next week, and then we're done, let's uh, let's talk about plants. We have plants and animals left. Obviously, we're not going to have enough time, and I figured you guys know more about uh, animals than you do plants going into next year's Keystone. So let's take a look at the Kingdom Plantae. This is our f uh, fifth kingdom, right? One, two, yeah, fifth kingdom. And let's look at the general characteristics. All plants are eukaryotic. You guys know that word. That means they all have uh, nuclei. They are all multicellular. There was a time where uh, algae and kelp were considered part of the plant kingdom, but they've been moved out to protists now. Mostly autotrophic, which, well, I'm going to be, let's be honest, almost all of them make their own food. But there are a few versions like the Venus flytrap that actually can... Uh, can move and trap insects and digest them heterotrophically. So mostly autotrophic, almost overwhelmingly autotrophic. Uh, they all do that through photosynthesis, and we'll get to that in a second. I mean, we're not going to go into the photosynthetic process because Mrs. Walzer will do that next year, but that's using sunlight to generate sugar, which we've talked about a few times. What do plants need? Plants need sunlight, obviously, for photosynthesis. They need water and gas exchange. Most organisms do, but I'm pretty sure that is on the exam for sure. Uh, this group is incredibly diverse, and we looked at that when we were taking a look at the uh, general intro. Let me let me shift this just a little bit just to get it square. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, it's so diverse, it's actually arranged into two general areas, non-vascular and vascular plants. So let's start today with non-vascular plants. Now, that means that they have no ability to move water or food through specific cells or vessels. So when you say vascular, in a human being, vascular means that we have blood vessels and then food, oxygen, and waste are transported through our bodies, which is why we can be so big and have so many cells. Well, these plants do not have vascular tissue, which is going to create some issues for them, okay? They have no way of transporting nutrients and water through their tissues, which I just said. This is why I hate PowerPoint. Their life cycle then depends on water, which includes rainfall and dew. They have to have it if they can't transport it. And there's going to be some solutions to that. Because they don't have vascular tissue, they can only draw the water up just a couple of centimeters. And they do that through osmosis. So if they're, if they're literally just letting water move as water moves, and they have no control or device or mechanism to move it on their own, how big can they actually be? Ha, huh, good question. Good question. They can't be. They're all very, very small, low liars, very close to their substrates or whatever they're attached to. And some of them aren't even anchored in soil. It's really cool. How about plants that can grow without dirt? You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Okay. Now, there are three major phyla. This is just a classification. If you remember, it goes kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. King Philip came over for good spaghetti. You guys remember that. Uh, the first one is the phylum bryophyta. Now, I know it's a big fancy science word, but don't be freaked out. I would say you've definitely heard of this one. The other ones you may not have heard of, but those of you who are hunters or go outdoors and don't spend all day in the basement playing Fortnite have seen them in the woods. You may not have known what they were. Okay, here we go. These are mosses. All of the mosses are in this phylum. Everybody knows what moss is. Uh, mosses are well adapted to wet, nutrient-poor soils. In fact, sometimes they don't even need soil. I mean, these are super tough plants, really small. Remember, they can't move water. They have no roots. In place of roots, and they're kind of root-like, they are called rhizoids. And they are long, thin cells, kind of like these little microscopic, spooky fingers that extend out and grab onto things. And they actually anchor the moss to whatever it's growing on, and, and they can grow everywhere. So here's what moss looks like. Now, I don't know if you can see it in this picture, but this is just moss growing on a tree. Can you see the bark right here? And you can see it's not very tall. It's very small. Again, this allows them to use osmosis instead of vascular tissue to move water through their, through their structures. So that's a moss, and there's, there's so many different varieties. This is the most diverse group of non-vascular plants. Okay, that just shows the little serrations at the end so that they can gather water. You can take a look at that one. Okay, there's a, and this is actually growing on a limb. 
that's kind of extending over the forest floor. That's leaf litter in the background right there. Again, very, very small. And there's just a different variety. You can see some other plants and stems growing through there. Okay. The next group is called the phylum Hepaticophyta or, or Hepaticophyta. You can pronounce it either way. Now, what are these guys? These are liverworts. Now, they, I know if we were in class, if you, especially if you hunt turkeys like I do, if you've been out, you have seen these, okay? Liverworts. And, and they're not warts like the viruses that cause, you know, lesions on your skin. That's not the same thing, okay? They actually look like leaves growing on the ground. And a lot of people think they're leaves that have fallen off of trees. It's pretty cool, especially if they're not reproducing. They definitely look like leaves. I'll show you a picture in a second. Uh, they have umbrella-shaped reproductive structure. So what you're going to have is you're going to have this flat leaf surface, and then there's going to be a reproductive structure going out of that leaf that looks like an umbrella. It's really cool. I'll show that to you too. Okay. Uh, they also do sexual reproduction. I'm sorry, asexual reproduction through a gemicup. So they normally do sexual reproduction through the umbrella, using the umbrella. But they also have an asexual mode in the event that the sexual parameters are not available. So they can reproduce either way, which is really cool, guarantees the continuation of the species. Maybe part of the reason that mosses, I'm sorry, that liverworts are so common. Okay, I'll show you that gemma cup too, it's pretty cool. And they'll have spores in it instead of seeds. I mean, not seeds, uh, liverworts. Okay, now look, here's the liverwort right here. You see these little leaves? And then look at these little umbrella things. Looks like you're at the beach. That's the reproductive structure. And I know some of you have seen this, okay? I know you have seen them. Boop. All right, now this is another great example. All of these are the body of the liverwort itself. And these are the umbrella-shaped reproductive structures. So it kind of looks like a little island and one palm tree coming out of it. And they grow on the ground. They, they grow at the base of trees. I mean, you can definitely find them right now. Definitely find them. Now, this is the liverwort itself, the thing that looks like a leaf. And then when you see these little, they kind of look like moon craters. Those are gemma cups. And if you look closely, there's these little round things in all the cups and a little bit of gel. Those are the asexual spores used for reproduction in this mode. Pretty cool. So those are liverworts. The last phylum is the phylum Anthocerophyta. Okay. These are hornworts, so very, very similar, but a little different, okay? A little different. They look like liverworts, there's no doubt about it, but the reproductive structure looks like a little green horn. And when I say horn, you can look at it two ways, either like the horn on a mammal, like a cow, or like a long flute or musical instrument. Pretty cool, I'll show it to you. All right, and there they are. See, no umbrella. Here are... The hornworts, these are the little leaf-looking structures at the bottom. See them right here? And then these are the little green horns sticking up. That is a hornwort. And those are around here in Pennsylvania, too. You just got to look for them. And remember, they're pretty small, so you really got to look for them. Let me show you another picture. Okay, there again, the hornwort itself, the thing that looks like a little leaf is at the base, and then those are the horn-like reproductive structures. And just another example of a picture, there's the hornwort, and you can see just a variety of, of reproductive structures sticking out there. Pretty cool. Okay, that is the first group. Those were non-vascular seedless plants. Non-vascular seedless plants, the lowest of the plants on our planet. So I'll let you take a look at that. I'll have a little assignment for you, and uh, I'll probably post another one tomorrow or Monday as we continue to get through this. I think we're going to do one more video, one more, one more little quiz, and I promise that's it for the year. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend, and hopefully I'll see you in the fall.